Okay, thank you, Dee. I want to invite any children who are here this morning to come on up and join me up here for a children's message. Any little kids? Come on up, guys. Come on up, and we're going to have a seat right up. You can slide up a little closer. That'd be great. Perfect. Uh, is there maybe one more, a couple more? Great. Come on up. You can sit right here with us. Excellent. How are you guys doing today? Having a good day? Good. I'm glad to hear it. So you know what I have here? What do you think this is? A box. Excellent. You are exactly right. It is a plain, simple, rectangular-shaped white box, right? What, what can you do with boxes? Anything interesting? You can make a fort. Good. Creative. I like that. You can put things in the box, right? You can store things. This particular box, this, this held 1,000 disposable communion cups. That was what was in this box before it got... I know 1,000. That's a lot, isn't it? 1,000. I know. Now, it's just a box, right? We've got lots of boxes around. You go in the storerooms here, there's tons and tons of boxes with things in them, right? But let me ask you this. If you do something special with this box, if you were to take this box and you were to wrap it with brightly colored paper, okay, and then you put a ribbon or a bow on the top of it, then is it still a box? It's a box, but what else is it? It's a present. It is magically transformed into a present, and then suddenly, you know what? It gets much more interesting, doesn't it? Yeah, much more interesting when it's a present than when it is just a box, because a present is a gift that someone gives to someone else, right? What are days that you get presents? Christmas. Christmas. Birthdays, things like that, right? Those are marked celebration events, that kind of a thing, right? It's a pretty cool deal to go from a box to a present. That's an important, fun, fun thing for us. Now, here's the deal. In the gospel lesson that we're going to read in just a minute, it's, there's a verse in there that's a very important, very special verse. It's called John 3.16. It's one of, it says this, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son. Who do you think he gave his only son to? Jesus, to all of us, right? He gave his only son, like a gift, like a present. God gave Jesus to all of God's people, right? He took a, what, 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 someone who's just like human, but because Jesus was human and God, and Jesus went to the cross. Jesus became a gift for everybody. Every single person, all of God's children, Jesus is a gift to. Jesus was transformed into a gift for everybody. And that's what that verse is about. And our job, okay, our, our job is two things. To receive that gift and be thankful, okay, for that gift, and then to help other people understand that Jesus is also a gift for them. And that with that gift comes love and grace and promises and all the things that Nolan here just received in his baptism, all those things come because of God's great love for each of us through Jesus. Think you can remember that? An important thing for us to know, that Jesus is the greatest gift ever given. Can we pray together? And then we'll go back to our spots. Let's pray. Dear God, we give you thanks for the gift of Jesus and for how he comes to our lives and how we receive love and grace because of him and how we can share that love and grace with all around us. Amen. Thanks so much for coming up. You can return to your seats. And while they're doing that, I will ask the congregation to please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel can be found on page 864 of your Pew Bibles if you would like to follow along. I would suggest today that once we read the Gospel lesson that you keep this page open. I'm going to refer back to it and ask you to look at a couple things during the sermons. You might want to hang on to this page. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, chapter 3, verses 14 through 21. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness... So must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. 
Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator and from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. When I am driving, I love pulling up behind cars that have a lot of bumper stickers. I don't know what it is, but I kind of get a kick out of seeing what they say. I think that when people put bumper stickers or window stickers on their cars, they're trying to tell us something, perhaps about the cause they support, but certainly about themselves as well. Now, I especially love it when I see religious bumper stickers. Funny ones are my favorites. Now, bumper stickers that I've seen lately here around town say things like, Jesus loves you, but I'm his favorite. One bumper sticker had a small image of two fish talking to each other in a bowl. One says to the other, if there is no God, then who changes the water? Or the one that says, Jesus saves, but you should invest wisely. I saw one just this last week that just simply said, I saw that, signed God. And my all-time favorite religious bumper sticker was from a time when I saw when I was a college student, I was studying religion, and I was visiting a Buddhist temple in Los Angeles. Now Buddhists believe in reincarnation. So in the temple's gift shop, yes, the Buddhist temple had a gift shop, they were selling a bumper sticker that said, I've been born again, and again, and again, and again, and again. Now, while I do enjoy bumper stickers, not so much on my own car, but on other people's cars, I do worry that occasionally we confuse bumper sticker-like statements with actual statements of faith. Sometimes we can be guilty of reducing our own faith to bumper sticker-like quotes, just statements out of context. Things like, God helps those who help themselves, which much to many people's surprise, is not actually anywhere in the Bible, and we really don't even believe that it's true either. Or, or God won't give us more than we can handle, a statement also not in the Bible that sure doesn't feel true when life is difficult or when we experience a tragedy. Now certainly God is present with and helps those who can help themselves or those who experience very hard times, but God is also with and helps those who cannot help themselves. In fact, Jesus talks about having a special compassion for the poor, the sick, the refugee, the homeless, the lonely, and the overwhelmed. Now there are lots of bumper sticker faith statements that we hear all the time. Some are true, many are not. Now, I mention this because, because I worry just a little bit about today's gospel lesson. Now, this short paragraph from the third chapter of John is one of the richest and most meaningful in all the gospels. And it is the home of probably the most well-known verse in all of scriptures, John 3.16. This is the verse that Martin Luther called the gospel in miniature. I'm sure many of you know it. I was required to learn it and memorize it as a child. If you know this, say it with me. Okay, here we go. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will never perish, but have eternal life. It is a beautiful verse, full of promise, that is familiar to so many people. And I worry just a tiny little bit 
that with such great familiarity, it can lose its meaning, its impact. It can be something of a bumper sticker for us, just a statement, a good quote, easily memorized and recited, but we don't really look much beyond that at the depth of its meaning. We don't look at the context of what Jesus is telling us. And interestingly, I think it's the wisdom that comes from the verses around John 3.16, the ones both before and after, which help us to understand this, the most famous verse in all the Gospels, even better. So do me a favor and take your Bibles and look at this verse. Again, you can turn to page 864 in your pew Bible if you'd like to find it. I'll give you just a second here to locate it. Now look at verses 14 and 15. John 3, 14 and 15. It says, And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. Now I think it's interesting, because in this piece of Scripture, Jesus is looking both backwards and forwards. First, he's looking back at the story of Moses. He points to the story of the Israelites being attacked by poisonous snakes. And God instructs Moses to make, make the figure of a snake out of bronze and then to put it on the end of a tall pole and then hold that pole up so that all can see it. And when anyone who had been bitten by a snake looked at it, they would be healed. Clearly, Jesus is looking back here at the people's history. But then he looks forward to what he and his people, his followers, will experience. Jesus says that he too will be lifted up. And that this is going to happen in two ways. First is the actual physical elevation of Jesus up onto the cross. And second is metaphorical. The word that John uses here for lifted up can also be translated as the word exalted. So Jesus will be lifted up, exalted for the world to see. Well, why? Why do we elevate something? So that it can be seen, so that it's visible. Jesus' death on the cross is ultimately not a humiliation or a defeat, is the mom- it is the moment of Jesus' greatest glory. His elevation as he achieves the purpose for which he was commissioned and then sent. Jesus is lifted up, both physically and metaphorically, so that the whole world can see God's great act of redemption and healing. The cross is when all of God's grace and glory are revealed. Why? Well, for God so loved the world. Now take a look at the verses immediately after John 3.16. John writes that indeed God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believe in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already because they have not believed in the name of the Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Now the key word in this sentence is, I think, the word judgment, which comes from the Greek word krisis. In this context, Croesus doesn't mean a legal judgment or a verdict. It actually translates to mean uncover or disclose or reveal. Now, when you understand this, verse 18, where he talks about those who do not believe being condemned, feels not like Jesus judging, but rather Jesus is revealing. It changes the verse to say that the resurrection uncovers or reveals that light has come into the world. Those who believe that God is love are saved. They look to the one lifted up and exalted to receive healing. But those who cannot imagine that God comes bringing love rather than punishment are lost. Lost to despair, sin, and confusion. 
the judgment, or in this case, what is uncovered or disclosed or revealed, is that we are broken by sin and cannot free ourselves. Jesus is telling us that left to our own devices, we very well might love darkness more than light. That we do not want to admit our need and receive God's grace and forgiveness. That we want to maintain our sense of control. That there is something in us that fears being exposed for the broken people that we are. Jesus is teaching us in this gospel story that through his own life, death, and resurrection, the light of the world will be revealed. And it will be, it will be made clear that those who love the light are walking with God. I was leading a high school mission trip years ago in Louisville, Kentucky. We spent a week there working with Habitat for Humanity. Now, one day on the work site, we encountered a child who would be someday living in one of the homes that we were working on. He was an incredibly happy kid. He just loved hanging out on the work site with us, watching us dig the trenches where this foundation was going to go that this home would be resting on. One day at the end of our workday, as we were packing up, it started to rain. It rained pretty hard. So we loaded everything up. He was standing outside, and our group offered him a ride. We said, you want to get on the bus? Want us to give you a ride home? So, sure, he climbed on the bus. He was excited to be on it with us. We drove him the three blocks to his home to call his home a shack would be generous. It was mostly plywood. It looked like it could tip over any moment. It had busted out windows with no screens. The porch had collapsed. Now, when our group saw him climb out of the bus, run up the yard, hop over the broken step, and run in the front door, well, for several minutes after he got off the bus, our group was pretty silent. The next day was day four on the work site. He was back. He was just hanging out, talking to us, playing, swinging from a tree. Now, by this point of the week, by day four, you kind of hit a wall. You're pretty tired. You're pretty hot. You're pretty sore. And our group had been drained of its energy. So during one of the break, everybody was sitting under shade, drinking water, kind of dreading the starting of work again. And this little boy was running around, high energy, doing what he does. And I remember one of the kids in our group, Stephanie, asked him, I think she asked him this because she had seen his house. She said, you are the happiest kid I've ever seen. Why are you always so happy? And he laughed. And he said, because mama says that Jesus is going to give us a house. Because mama says that Jesus is going to give us a house. Well, once again, our group was silenced. For about 30 seconds, maybe a minute, there was not a word as everyone considered what this little kid had said. And then I remember Matt, one of our high school seniors, hopped up and said, Okay, everybody, break's over. And everyone got up. And despite the sore shoulders and arms, the heat and the exhaustion, the shovels and hammers started moving again with a new sense of purpose and energy. We weren't just working on a habitat home or even just on this kid's home. We suddenly understood that we were working on the home that Jesus was going to give him. We were a part of Jesus' mission. It was so simple. It was so obvious. That little boy revealed something to us. He opened our eyes. And within his simple, brave statement, because Mama said that Jesus is going to give us a house, Jesus was lifted up, exalted, and God's love and grace were revealed. And for our group, in that moment, everything changed. My friends, John 3.16 and the verses immediately around it, they are a beautiful written description of God's great love for us. 
John 3.16 will fit on a bumper sticker. But when read in the whole context of that entire paragraph, verses 14 through 21, it does even more. It reminds us that when Jesus is lifted to the cross, it is not because of the acts of a sinful people, but rather because it is the act of a loving God. It is so simple. It is so obvious. And in that moment, everything changed. It reveals to us that Jesus is a light that shines into the darkness and that this light reveals to us our own brokenness and our dependence on God's grace. It reveals to us a depth way beyond what a bumper sticker can tell us. John 3.16 and the verses that surround it point us towards Jesus' purpose and mission and our purpose and mission. Light in the darkness. Light that reveals. Light. Why? For God so loved the world. Thanks be to God. Amen.